they are everywhere, on each OS and continent. They keep a lot of amount servers and infrastructures around the world. Usually they are hidden from the civilians, but still deadly important. There are simple ones called temporary very often, but there are very advanced examples as well. Sometimes they replace normal software as is much simpler, but sometimes they act only as a glue. Sometimes removing only one tiny piece of such in an important element is practically impossible as the rest part of our project or infrastructure would fall apart. Even in the future there will be some kind of AI, AI, AI which we are scared today. These have the biggest chances to be on the first line in this AI army. About why I'm talking now you may ask. About bash scripts of course, shell scripts. This is subject which is always up to date for admins, devops as programmers. Over the years there were introduced many bad habits, practices, approaches and this is the moment to challenge them now. Now we try to learn how to write good bash scripts today according to today's standards of course. We have to as these inconspicuous scripts still are keeping everything working as expected. Generally, bash scripts are quite interesting topic, as most new Linux admins, when they only discover this area, they are also are so excited that they can automate most every single command as they completely don't think about some organization or practices. They just write scripts in ad hoc manner and later problems with maintain will arise if we won't keep an eye on this rush, rush approach, I would say. Today, I will show you a good and bad example of script and approach and tool which should be your new mandatory tool which you should use while writing your bash scripts. Before we start, let's have a look on this flowchart about this example script which I will be used here. I think this is a very simple example. So we start our script and instantly script checks if the file lock file is present. This technique, this file locking mechanism, is used to prevent multiple instances of the same script working on the same data. Don't ask me why you run multiple instances of the same script at the same time mostly, but let's assume that this is the case. So if our script detects a temporary file which acts as a locking mechanism, then it immediately returns with exit code different than zero. This is one in this case. For instance, this does not matter now. If file log does not exist, then script creates this file and from that point this current instance of the script can exclusively work on its duties. In the next step, the script goes into the working dir directory as in this directory we'll be doing something with files. When script enters to this directory, it checks if working dig slash config file exists. If yes, then it renames this file to old.config.unix time timestamp pattern. Unix time is a time which passed from the uh, 9070 year. This is a number of seconds. This is a very big number which is quite useful uh, here. If this file, I mean working dir slash config, does not exist, it will be simply created by using redirection with the newest Unix time taken from the script. After this, script tries to keep only the last three newest such files, I mean config and old.config.unix timestamp. Rest files will be removed to prevent from creating of too many such files and possibly in the future there will be no free space because of that. And in the last step, the file log is of course removed from and all script finishes its job, its job. This example is very basic and perfect to show you how important good practices are and how important it is to use good tool while writing your bash scripts. Before we go further, we will install shellcheck program which is some kind of linter for bash written in Haskell. This tool will help us a lot with writing good scripts. Most popular distributions should have this program in their own repositories. As you can see, there is a package for Ubuntu and CentOS. If you are a more ambitious person, you may go to the GitHub page for the code and compile it by yourself. This brings us to question, do I really need this tool to writing even some simple scripts? Usually we can meet approaches like, this script has only a couple lines and it's temporary. Well. From my experience, 90% of scripts are not temporary and over the years they evolve to hundreds or thousands of lines of code. That's why I think a good approach is always the key 
even if our script is very simple. I think same comments are quite enough to figure out what's going on here. There are many errors and bad practices presented here. For instance, hardcoded file lock, which is highly error prone. Imagine what will happen if there will be misspelling file lock in one place in the script. Moreover, we don't check if we can even enter to the destination DIN and later we are working on that DIR, which may be different from which we would expect. That's highly dangerous. The real question here is, do we have a tool which will help us with such script? The answer is yes, of course. I mean shellcheck, of course, but not only shellcheck. I will explain it later on a good example. If we use shellcheck, that it, then it shows us errors, suggestions, problematic lines, as you can see on the screen. There is also possibility to easily integrate shellcheck with popular editors. Here in the movie I showing, I'm showing VIM with Syntastic plugin, which uses shellcheck under the hood to verify bash scripts in the editor window. Okay, let's go over this good example script. As you can see in the beginning, we have a set minus E. This is the directive or option which says to script that if we don't handle external errors from the external commands, but using the special pipeline, this pipeline exactly, so script should uh, exit immediately. There is also set minus U. This is also a special directive which says to script if there is unbound or unused variable in the code, then the script should exit immediately and don't proceed. Uh, going down, we have important variables. As you can see, we also have uh, some normal commands here defined like rm, mv, and also another variables that I will be using in the, the next uh, part of the, the lighter part of the script. Also, we have uh, go going down, we have a function remove log file. This function will be used uh, extensively because we want to make sure that all file locked is removed in case of some problems, in case of uh, unexpected things. So this function will be used extensively and that's why I decided to uh, to use function to handle this functionality. Uh, some of the unexpected things may be sigint uh, signal, uh, which is usually control C. So we try to trap again, which means catch this signal and also invoke remove lock file function. And I think that this is very clear why we are using this approach here. Okay, in this part we are checking if uh, log file exists. If already exists, of course, we are exciting with the script because uh, it seems that another script is running. That's the normal case. But if uh, there is no log file, uh, this is the situation here. We're creating this log file and we handle the errors just in case the log file cannot be created. In such case, we of course uh, show the error message to the. We redirect this error message to the standard error, or of course exit with a specific error code. This is the way which we are handling most of the errors. Going down, we are we are going to the working deal. As we as you can see, we also have a, a error handling just in case that we cannot enter the working deal. Uh, still clean up actions because the, here we have a active log file, a created log file, so we have to clean up this. Also, we as previous we um, print the message what what happened and exit with a specific error code. Later we have uh, some of the definitions of uh, config file patch and time now, which is Unix time as I said before. And as you can see, we check if this config file patch, uh, this file exists. If it exists, then we try to move, let's say, change the name of this file to the prefix dot config file name dot time now with this time file. Of course, this action also may fail. So we send the message to the standard error and also do some of the cleanup actions and exit with the a specific error code. Uh, error codes are different in each case as you can see. In the last one on this screen as you can see we are trying to redirect uh, Unix time to the new config file patch because the old config file patch was renamed as you as you may remember from the previous section so we are trying to do this but just in case still error is handling as previously we are sending the message we are doing some cleanups and exit with um, error 
number this is another different number that it was previously and the last part of this script as you can see we are taking the number how many new US files we should keep uh, and use this variable to use in the um, find command which was suggested by uh, shellcheck and we are um, we have a for loop uh, over the files which have been found by find command those files are files which are candidates to be removed so three newest files are not listed here just in case if we cannot remove uh, here we still uh, we just handle the error as previously we read in the message uh, clean up the log file and exit with different exit code and uh, that's it this is that's it and when we are finishing the work as you can see we have a okay message and still uh, we are trying to clean up um, a log file because at this moment log file still exists because there were no errors previously so uh, so we have to clean up and uh, it's uh, finished now and here you can see how the script handles corner cases. This corner case is, for example, when we try to make working dir as a slash root directory. And this is a directory which user should have no access and this is permission denied. So script exit immediately. Nothing happens. We can also try to make a path to the log file to the home. In my machine, home cannot on the home partition. Normal user cannot write anything. So so there is still error uh, we can enter to the normal working directory but we still have an error because we cannot uh, write the locking script and still it's very well handled by the script nothing bad happens with our data or files this is two corner cases that they are very extremely well handled by this script Okay, I think that's it. Uh, this is my website. My website is mostly in Polish language, but this uh, article is, uh, of course, in English language because it's an English language movie. Uh, I will put the link in the description below so you uh, f find in the description. Uh, my, uh, mov most of my movies and articles on my website are in Polish language, but I will try to record more in English. So leave the comments or give me some feedback if you are interested in more uh, movies like this with proper bash training because I have uh, some good plans for the near future with uh, new YouTube movies and also articles so give me any feedback uh, I really appreciate for any single comments and feedback but uh, this time I uh, thank you for it thank you for your time and see you next time of course